Join our podcast conversations as we share ideas, insights, and information that will educate, inform, and inspire. We will blend our knowledge of online safety and emotional awareness to help you have a better understanding of your kids' online world and their emotional responses and well being. And welcome to episode number one. Very yes. exciting. This is great. We finally, we talked about it this past summer. Mm -hmm. We've made it come to fruition, uh, balancing mm -hmm. your schedule and my schedule, uh, just, you know, as our commitment to parents and children, uh, we just want to make this happen. So Sarah, great to be with you. Always a pleasure. And you know what I love is that this is just going to be a real conversation. We're just going to have a conversation about topics that matter to our listeners. Yeah, no script. Uh, we didn't rehearse this. We just plucked the topic. And we're going to talk about it. And so today we're going to talk about social media challenges. By the mm. time, you know, you hear this, you will have already heard of one major challenge, which was on a platform called TikTok. And it was called the Devious Lick Challenge. That seems to have um, faded. It's still out there, but faded. But uh, since then, apparently there's a conglomerate out there, which has predicted what the next challenges are. They have one for October, November, December. And just for the record, I think that's complete garbage. I always look at immediate threats. I look at something that has happened and looking to address it while trying to prevent any possibility of something forthcoming or becoming harmful. So there's another one this month, which we won't educate um, the listeners on. Let's just say that if uh, it had to come to fruition, uh, there would be assault charges involved because it's a little on the um, side of human interaction and not in a pleasant handshake kind of way. But we don't have to focus specifically on the act itself. What I think we should focus on is that, look, um, your 10 seconds of fame with some of your fake friends online is not worth what potentially can come down the road when someone has a copy of that video and it is shown in 10 years from now because the psychological impact that that will have later on when seeking an opportunity with a sports team, looking for an opportunity in college university, or obviously with an employer, can be damaging. So as much as I love technology uh, to embrace us and connect us, and you know, let's be honest, the only reason our audience is going to hear us now is because of technology, True. we have to be wise about it, right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of really fun things online, but we have to avoid the for the moment things and these mm -hmm. challenges can't let's let's just go back to the devious lick challenge because like i said by the time people listen to this hopefully it's faded into eternity but and this is one i heard a lot of from my teacher friends yeah well the you one know why you're about you, to share yeah do you know why you heard from them because some teachers were made to sit in front of school bathrooms and take attendance as to who went in and they were made to require students to leave phones and backpacks and only one at a time because what was happening sarah was that these kids were walking into bathrooms with phones and hey elementary school you want another great reason not to have a phone in the classroom they were walking into bathrooms with phones and they were recording themselves stealing things like soap dispensers taking mm. apart the urinals removing the doors off of the hinges so they were looking for a sense of a um, accomplishment saying look what i did and i never got caught but it got worse it then went into the classroom and things were being taken from the classroom. Some teachers had reported that phones were missing from their purses. It got ugly. And why? For that five seconds of going online and saying, look what I did. Can you top that? Can you? And if I had to say that if there's only one good thing that came out as a result of this is that all these individuals that got caught were caught as a result in most cases because of their followers. One of their followers said, you know what? That is not cool. I'm reporting it. So they captured the evidence, the video. They have a username. They have evidence of the individual because they're in the video. And they hand it over to the principal or a teacher or the police. And so thankfully, they got caught and there were consequences. Oh, let me share with you some of the consequences. And maybe you can address this from you know your perspective because it's not just an immediate. So some students were suspended from school. Some students were sent home with a bill for, to their parents to pay for the damages. Now, these examples come, from me, come to me from principals. Some students were criminally charged. Why? Because it was either theft or vandalism. 
So that and five seconds, yeah, not good. But here's us interject for this for one moment. When you're doing something that you know is against is beyond beyond against rules against the law the vandalism recording yourself and then posting it i i think shows a big lack of not even just the act but of the awareness that this is something that not even not only shouldn't be done but then definitely not posted so i mean there's there's so many different pieces to this this piece of social media that we now find ourselves in because can you imagine us growing up this wouldn't even a i would never even think of doing this and then b i wouldn't even want it to be anywhere even if you know i mean i mean just getting your head around the whole thing like doing it and then posting about it and then i i wonder if there's also really a disconnect so the disconnect i think comes in oh i'm just doing this for followers and likes oh i'm just doing this because it's part of a challenge so i'm not even i'm not even correlating the fact that this is against the law or that you know it's just for fun but just for fun can quickly turn into now i like you said i have charges oh, I have to pay a bill or it goes back on my parents. So it, it's these things that are classified as just for fun or a challenge uh, aren't that, literally. Like they aren't that. They are things that are harmful and also destructive as well as have severe consequences. But I think that part, do you think is also a disconnect maybe for even kids this day and age where social media just seems to be part of the status like you part of the okay i'm just it's just it's i'm on social media and this is what's happening and i want to be part of it so now i want to fit in that can certainly be true for a percentage of the population we have a lot of kids on social media sarah that are amazing they're leaders they're not followers oh they for will, sure they will speak out against this kind of stuff. That's why all these some of these kids got caught mm -hmm. and they're doing right, uh, trying to fix a problem. But here's here's the issue. When you and I were kids, we made a lot of foolish choices. Mm -hmm. It wasn't premeditated because remember, all these videos are premeditated. They didn't just walk into a bathroom with a phone and decide to steal something. They knew based on what they saw that they were going to do it. When we did foolish things, in most cases, it was in the moment, and we hope we didn't get caught. And if we didn't, we felt, okay, foolish, I shouldn't have done it, I never got caught, I'll learn my lesson, and we kind of moved on. We didn't want to brag about our foolishness. We don't want to share with, with it with the, to the whole wide world. And so- Yes, you, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah, and so I, I can't speak to that, mm -hmm. but I can say this, um, we could protect a boatload of kids if parents would simply respect the rules given to them about how old their children should be on technology, for example, social media. And this can be a different episode of our podcast. But if you have a 10-year-old who's not allowed to be on TikTok, and that 10-year-old is influenced by a 14-year-old who's doing it, and then the 10-year-old subsequently does it, well, let's just be honest. We, let's, let's call it the way it is. The parents put that child in that position to be influenced and subsequently got themselves in trouble. The kids shouldn't have been there in the first place. So, you know, when I speak, it's about education, but also respecting rules. Mm -hmm. And as we're speaking right now, recording this, uh, there's all kinds of testimony being delivered uh, in the United States Senate about what, what is happening with Facebook through their whistleblower. Like, and that'll be a different podcast, but it talks about the importance of protecting our kids as well and making sure they respect the age criteria for being on certain platforms because we could protect this whole group of kids if parents respected those rules. Now, let's say they are 14. They need to be educated. So then they on... wouldn't be in elementary school. This wouldn't even be an issue in elementary school. Right. So that's what we're right. So then you could you save those whole group of, of kids because exactly. they wouldn't be on. Right. Because then there wouldn't be of age to be on. 
exactly. And you know, sir, right. there's a whole bunch of things they can do other than be on social media. But let's talk about the high schoolers. All right, so okay. we, we're going through this whole maturity process. They're learning risk and consequence. But there is that disconnect, I'll come back to what you said, between the risk and the consequence and what feels for the moment, which is, I kind of want to do it versus giving mm -hmm. thought. And, you know, mm -hmm. my I've always said this, you never go from your emotions to your fingertips. You always process. So they should be critically analyzing all this stuff that they're seeing and saying, wait a minute, I understand that they did it to get the likes and the comments, but I also understand that what they did to get likes and comments equal theft, vandalism, destruction of school property. Now, as a result, it's leading to suspensions, expulsions, criminal charges. Teachers are being inconvenienced to have to monitor bathrooms. And see, kids aren't thinking ahead. You and I, as adults, as critical thinkers, we are. And they need to be taught that. Because remember, that mind, and I'm not the expert in this field, hasn't fully developed yet. So not until 25 years old. Okay, there you go. 25 keep, years old. I keep hearing that number. Mm -hmm. So education is key, but also consequence. So kids need to understand that there is a relationship between doing something and then the consequence as a result of doing it, especially if it's, you know, breaks criminal code, for example, or violates school policy. Now, some well, choices kids, that goes to choices have consequences. Yes. Sometimes you know what, positive, sometimes not, not. I think you need to take over because that's exactly where we're at, is that choices have consequences. And I think for the parents listening to this, that is an incredibly important component is that these kids are not doing this by accident or by mistake. And please, we need to stop using lack of judgment. They are making a poor choice. So you need to take over with that because I think that is so important because they have made a choice. It's mm -hmm. not an accident. It's not a mistake. It's not a lack of judgment. It's a poor choice. Mm -hmm. Well, and then I look at, so when, when I, I and I'll relate it back to, you know, growing up, fitting in was a big deal. Even as an adult, there are certain moments where I can tell that I'm trying to fit in as opposed to belong. Now I'm conscious of it. So I understand the difference. But as a young person, I didn't understand. Like, what do you mean fit in versus belong? So how I would define it as fitting in is that feeling of I need to do or say something or look a certain way so that these people embrace me or like me. Belonging is saying, this is me. Perfectly imperfect, take it or leave it, here I am. But you're going to find people who appreciate you for you. Not that you have to change uh, your look, your uh, the way you express yourself. It's just they you feel as though you're just you and they get you and you belong. Growing up, I don't know if you ever had this, but this feeling of wanting to have more friends or maybe we call it wanting to be popular. So that that fits into the that fitting in. And maybe you, you almost would do whatever it took just to fit in. And I think a lot of people that I've talked to and a lot of kids and a lot of parents, there is still a strong sense of I want to fit in because then I feel accepted and then I have confidence. And then instead of realizing that belonging is actually about you knowing who you are and accepting you for who you are. And I mean, knowing who you are is a journey. I mean, that, that it's, it's an ongoing evolution and journey, but really embracing that this is who I am. And I don't need you to like me for me to like me. I feel like you've nailed that, Paul, actually. Even you, you do just you. You are just you. You know, and you've said this before, whether people like you or not, you are authentically you. And that is the process that we and the journey we want to take our kids on. So when we look at how do I we teach our kids that fitting in is not where it's at. It's actually feeling like you belong. And so that comes to quality of friendships over quantity. So it's not just about more likes, more friends, more than if there's no substance. Now, I don't want to tangle a web here, but when I talk about, you know, that feeling of I want, I want more friends, I want more likes, 
isn't that what social media has been really driven on? So here we are trying to get our kids to be, no, no, you just belong. Like whether you, the people like you or not, but then you go to social media and it's all about likes. Well, they didn't like that photo, but I got tons of people who liked that, that thing I did when I took the soap dispenser at the, the, in the washroom, look at all the feedback I got there. Now, if I relate those likes to, they accept me, they think I'm cool. They think I, now I feel like I'm, my confidence is building, but it's not really because it's not, a, again, it's not about belonging, which is what we want to get our kids to. It goes back to that. Now you're just trying to fit in again. And that can be a constant cycle. Cause then you got to do the next thing. Then you got to say the next thing you got to, And I think that's where we see these patterns happening. Well, next month will be another thing. And it'll be the, maybe the same people that are involved that did have a, that did get it caught, but it's worth it to them. I don't care about the consequence because I get more likes and I get more. And that's part of my self-esteem. So this is really, I think getting our, we have to go back to understanding and helping our kids understand that big difference of fitting in versus belonging. And that's a huge that's a huge learning curve. There's another issue uh, to your point, because mm -hmm. when you talked about getting the likes and getting mm -hmm. the comments, here's the other issue. And I don't know how to deal with it. I've just analyzed it and I've taken lots of notes on it. Let me give you this um, challenge that just happened on TikTok as an example. A lot of those videos were getting tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of views. So let's say a person's on TikTok. They have 50, 60 followers. Their average views are 100 or 200 because not only your followers will see if your account's open, others will. But this one day, you all of a sudden spike to 10,000 views and mm. you got 800 likes. You know what you're doing? You're setting yourself up for failure because here's what I've noticed time and time again that next video just dropped like a rock and now you're back to 40 50 views with five or ten likes now how does that play into the psyche does that mean that kid now mm. is going to feel worse about themselves or now are they going to have to outdo that first video at whatever cost to equal or eclipse the previous likes and the previous yeah. comments They've set them up for failure. I talk about this now only for the past two weeks in my parent presentation. They set themselves up. So we have to go back to what I've stated for probably 10 years. Don't ever judge your self-worth based on the likes and comments you get. You're better than that. But you know where that starts from, Sarah? Parenting, guardians, mm -hmm. and caregivers. Mm -hmm. Because if they keep going down this path of, oh, look what I just accomplished, and then they crash, which they always will crash, immediately following it's going to hurt self-esteem it's going to help hurt self-confidence and now if they're going after the next great thing to outdo it it can come at a cost their reputation yes. suspensions criminal charges expulsions kids don't know that this is hurting them mm -hmm. i can only talk about you know the tech stuff but i see this from a dad's perspective from just mm -hmm. a human being saying look what you're doing to yourself and those emotions yeah. is what we have to really talk about. Well, and you've you've hit the nail on the head when you talk about the emotions. So when you talked in the beginning, you don't do go from emotions to your fingertips. And I say, you know, emotions change choices. So if we're feeling an emotion of it, it even be happy. Oh, I'm so happy I'm getting this many likes. Oh, I'm gonna do that next thing because I, I feel like ecstatic about this this amount of views I'm getting and the amount of popularity it seems that this this video got so now i'm going to do the next piece and then to bring in okay so why are you doing it we go again back to fitting in versus belonging see how it's just trickling back to this like yeah. i can't say this enough and i know this from my own experience when i look back as being a preteen and a teen when i based my self-worth on 
external, external people liking me or external people asking, asking me to uh, hang out with them or being invited somewhere. And if there was lots of that, I thought that I would feel happy and confident. But then you realize that confidence is actually internal. You know, there's people who uh, from the outside could look really, really confident, like, oh, look how many friends you have, or look how many likes you have. And then they realize, but they're not genuinely happy or confident. Maybe they're even outgoing and that's being, being masked as confident. Outgoing and confidence are very different things. So I do think that it's about us as parents, as adults, is as much as we can model and teach our kids that confidence is about who you believe you are and want to be and actually liking yourself, actually liking who you are, which is constantly, like I said, this is an ongoing journey. But if we get our kids to say, okay, who do you want to be as a person? And I don't mean what's your dream job. I don't mean anything. I mean, I want to ask kids. I want to, and I've been doing this for 16 years. I've been asking young people, I want you to write down the character traits that you're hoping to be known for as a person. Paul, sometimes you don't know what I'm talking about. And I say, okay, so let me give you a list of character traits. Maybe I'll say kind, caring, respectful, honest, trustworthy, energetic. They'll pick them or enthusiastic rather. They'll pick them. And I'll say, okay, so I want you to pick ones that you want to be known for, pick three. And I want you to put the words I choose in front. Say, I choose to be. So they'll write that I choose to be. And they'll say, say they say brave and respectful. That's what they want to be known for. Brave and respectful. Say, great. Why don't you pin that on your wall? Pin it on your wall. Okay. So it's pinned on your wall. So now every choice you're making, I want you to look at, is it being, for example, respectful? So then when we look back on these challenges, we're getting them to see that it's not just about making a choice to fit in and out of emotion. Well, out of an emotion out of out of an emotion of excitement, I'm gonna get a lot of likes, I'm just gonna do it. No, there's another place to make choices from. And you told me you're a respectful person. So what choice would a respectful person make? If you're being respectful to your school or respectful to property or respectful to your own self as how this might play out are you going to be seen as a respectful person to your school or to to whoever owns the facility you're taking the thing from i want kids to know there's two places to make choices from and this is an ongoing this is an ongoing journey and scale because if you ask those kids afterwards whoa that choice you made to do that lick from that school to take that soap dispenser was that made out of just a, out of an emotion, maybe excitement that you might get likes that goes into fitting in? Or did you make it out of, you said that day you chose respectful. Was that respectful? No. This is where belonging starts to really take root. This is where we start to plant the seed of, but if you were respectful, what would you have done? And, and what would you do now? So maybe you did make a choice that was totally out of emotions and, and now you regret it and now you want to do something different. Okay, so now I'm going to hold accountable to what, what, what are you going to do now if, you're, if you want to be seen as respectful? And then when we turn on the flip side and you said, well, there are certain people that were kids on TikTok that were taking a stand. They were making a choice that showed bravery, mm -hmm. right? And that takes that, again, they believe that that wasn't a respectful act. They're taking a stand for bravery, but it doesn't mean th those kids aren't anxious about taking a stand for bravery, but that didn't stop them. So what I want kids to know is you can feel a wide range of emotions, but you can still choose your character. But we got to get kids to say what character traits matter to you. And then we can help hold them accountable. And that's really, I believe, getting to the root of building their confidence and their ability to belong to themselves, to know who they are. So they're not just pulled into the, the emotion and the trying to fit in 
And again, our kids are going to make mistakes along the way. But if we have a focal point to bring them back to saying, whoa, you told me you wanted to be kind, respectful and brave. What choices are you making today to get you there? Or are you just letting that emotion or that fitting in take control? Very, very well said. And also, uh, well said to the end of our first episode. Uh, we could probably add on, but we do want to respect the time of our podcast listeners. No, that was honestly amazing. I'm going to add one more thing because I know we'll be able to go on forever. Everything you said, bang on accurate. One of the challenges, and maybe we can talk about this again later, we have to get the parents on board to self-reflect as well and to lead by example. Because we're telling yes. our kids, select your character. Parents just can't tell kids to do stuff. Parents no. need to engage their kids in terms of why they've given them directive. And so parents should do these exercises that you are telling kids to do so that when they're reflecting, they're guiding and leading by example. But again, perhaps on a different day. Sarah, yes. uh, finish episode number one. Looking forward to uh, episode two to 22 or 222 and until, yeah. next, <laughs> and until next time everyone uh thank you for joining us we look forward thank to the next so conversation much. and uh anything you want to say before we go and if you have any suggestions that you want us to talk about and to discuss let us know because we want to hear from you i mean this is what we know yeah good point they might know something we don't, and then we'll talk I'm about sure it. I'm sure they do. <laughs> well, you all know where to get a hold of us because this will be on our Facebook page and our Twitter pages. Uh, drop us a DM anywhere, and we'll be happy to respond. And you know what? If you are an expert in a certain field and you want to join us, we'll like to invite you on as a guest. So until next time, be safe, be well, and I look forward to the next conversation. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.